Welcome to the brunch on Cat Fatu Life. I'm Lavin Cham. This is our weekly current affairs program. After two weeks of dealing with football regarding the Gambia Football Federation national elections, we are back now to other businesses. Now, over the last 48 hours, there have been an acute shortage of fuel in most parts of the country. The reason being that the operators, the oil marketing companies, the OMCs, so they can no longer continue to sell at the price that the government has set for them. They also argued that they have been uh, foregoing margins of profit so that uh, fuel can be cheap for the public at the petrol stations. But they said the government in turn have not been faithful in helping them. They argued that all the profit margins have been scooped by government through some levy or some tax of one thing or the other. Uh, Gambo government, of course, had denied this. Now, at the moment, there is a negotiation going on between government and the operators at Petroleum House, we are told. But we are in the studio here to bring you exactly what happened and what is the way out of this for you and me, who will be traveling and motorists and will be buying fuel for our cars. In the studio, I have with me Nyang Jai, economist, familiar with this petroleum matters very well. Um, having worked at the Ministry of uh, Finance himself. Of course, uh, our Transport Union President is here. He will tell us how this matter has affected his sector and what can people look out for. They too also have their own agenda. They've been talking about uh, proposals for a new uh, fair tariff. We will look at all that. And I also have Alaji Jalo. He works from the Ministry of Finance and is familiar with this petroleum uh, business over there. Thank you, gentlemen. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I have, like I have said, uh, the OMC said they can no longer continue to sell at this price. The government have not been faithful or sincere with them in their dealings, uh, and now they want action. Either what they want happens, or they're going to lay down their tools, and that's obviously is already started affecting the people, uh, the public at large. Alaji Jalo from the Ministry of Finance. Um, do you think the OMCs have a valid point? Uh, thank you, Mr. Cham. Let me start by saying a few things on the structure of the price structure. Mm -hmm. There is a, this price structure is divided into three major components. Okay. The first component has to do with the importer costs. Importer the second cost. component has to do with the dealer, mm -hmm. that is the OMCs. Okay. And the third component has to do with government, that is the taxes. Okay. Uh, we all know what the Russian Ukraine war has done to energy and food prices, mm -hmm. and this has affected this has affected countries in various ways, especially the Gambia, which is not an exception. Mm -hmm. uh, as a result, uh, I want to go back to the point that uh, OMCs are claiming that they are losing their margin and profit to government. Yes, I believe this is not the case. Mm -hmm. Government over the past seven months have lost 1.2 billion dollars on energy subsidy, mm -hmm. and that is equivalent to the best performing month of GRA revenue collection. So you mean that is that, on that was side. an area where GRA could have uh, collected a lot of money. These were the program revenues that were to emanate from uh, oil revenues, mm -hmm. but because government was compelled to subsidize mm -hmm. to mitigate the fast pass through impact. Mm -hmm of fuel prices to the ordinary Gambians, mm -hmm. we had to forego this equally as mm -hmm. the way OMCs had to forego some part of their revenue. Yeah. Okay. That is on the one side. Okay. On the other side is that we all know Gambia, the kind of volumes we are doing for petroleum products mm -hmm. is a very minimalistic volume. So as a result... So what do you mean by that? Explain that. You mean uh, the, the, the amount of fuel that comes here the is The amount of fuel that is coming to Gambia yeah. is so minimal that in terms of economic of skills, yeah. you don't have large vo uh, boats yeah, that's or because of our shipment size, that are size, coming. Size of our population. Yeah, that can be cost effective in terms of shipment ah. or shipping cost to I Gambia. Understand. The same thing so as a result, yeah. that would have a cost implication. I see. And we have to deal with that cost implication, mm -hmm. deal with the Russian-Ukraine war, mm -hmm. and deal with the social dimension. Okay. These three parameters are fundamental in the whole pricing structure. Mm -hmm. uh, Again, I want to emphasize mm -hmm. that government has not gained any margin that was supposed to be accrued to OMCs in terms of taxes. That's what they claim. 
but that is I we can prove to you beyond any reasonable doubt and Mr. Nyang Jai knows this quite well. Mm -hmm. Anybody who worked under price structure knows quite well that uh, there used to be an adjuster called Flumar. Mm -hmm. And as we speak, from January or from the start of the Russian Ukraine war mm -hmm. up to June, mm -hmm. that Flumar has been negative. Absolutely. You yeah, explain that Flumar. Well, what, what does that it mean? It is an adjuster. Like the three, comp the three segments of the price structure yeah. I indicated, mm -hmm. their interaction okay. give you what we call the calculated pump price. Oh, okay. And the calculated pump price is not necessarily mm -hmm. the pump price that you buy at the pump. I see. I so where you have a regulated pump price, mm -hmm. that might obviously be different from the calculated pump price. Yes. Ah. That difference is what is giving you the full amount. Mm -hmm. okay, and where that difference is negative, that means government have to pay back yes. ah. OMCs for selling less than the calculated. And that has been the case. Mm. There were instances where government had to put on top of every liter that you buy, 20 dollars, for three months in a row. So that it wouldn't cost so $20 more. So you and I would not get it and $20 Omar more and Jam Jai mm -hmm. are able to acquire one liter of fuel, yeah, being it diesel mm -hmm. or petrol. $20, $20 less. $20 is on less top. Less no. than we should have got it. Oh. No. no. Okay. You were getting it at a price. Of let's say $60. $60. Yeah. But the actual price was $20, 20. $80. That's what I'm saying. So, so that means for every liter that you buy, government, was government is putting back $20, $20 for ah, you to be able to get it. Yes. Okay. Which in effect is telling you that the claim that OMCs are saying government is gaining the margin mm. of profit That's what they said. cannot be. Because <laughs> logic defies that if I am losing, but they said, I am not gaining. But they said I they cannot said. be losing and gaining at the same time. What, what, is, what do you make of the argument that they ask government to bring down the price because <laughs> the price has come down in the world market and you refuse to do that? No, but <laughs> let, me, let me also what bring one what? dimension to mm. the, the fuel pricing. Mm. We all know in this country, fuel pricing is done once a month. Mm. It is not like the US or advanced countries where prices change daily, Dynamic. taking on spot prices. Mm. We don't do that because we are not system sophisticated to accommodate those kind of price changes mm. and our social safety system cannot allow you to wake up every day to a new pump, right? Mm. So what we do is we have a price range that is a period between 25th of the previous month the and 25th or 24th of the current month. Ah. We take an average to smoothen out the up and And it's down. government that always said that? Yes. They often said you don't consult them. No, that is not But true. these indicators are global, yeah? I mean, uh, okay, let's, let's go. <laughs> they often say they don't consult them. I don't think that is true. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to the best of my knowledge, I've been in this uh, pricing system for mm -hmm. over a decade. Mm -hmm. And I've prepared this price structure for over a decade. People mm -hmm. who are in the industry know me quite well. Uh, and as a result, I am telling you, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to verify mm -hmm. and validate mm -hmm. that globally, this is a practice not only peculiar to Gambia. Mm -hmm. In the sub-region, this is what happens. Mm -hmm. So because you are not adopting a spot pricing and a daily price regulation, mm -hmm. you are compelled to take an average mm -hmm. of 25, 25th of the past month and 25th of the current, of the current month mm -hmm. to give you a period of 30 days. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, you are not only taking mm -hmm. the, the daily prices anyhow, you are taking the daily average. Mm -hmm. That is the up and uh, bottom of yeah. range mm -hmm. of a particular day, mm -hmm. yeah. just so you smoothing out this price movement. They also said the removal of uh, what what they call premium pre, um, trader premium. premium and the elimination of credit uh, letter of credit. Say so that they violate the rules that you have, the agreement you had with them. Uh, let me say that we did not eliminate the traders premium. That's mm. one. Mm. We did not also eliminate the LC. And we did not also eliminate the importer margin per cycle. Okay. What we did was there was a joint uh, understanding through a meeting that was conducted mm -hmm. with uh, a pricing committee that has been set by government mm -hmm. that is chaired at the Ministry of Petroleum, yeah. chaired by the PS Minister of Petroleum, mm -hmm. where all OMCs were in attendance and they agreed to certain parameters for adjustment. And these parameters were not effectively removed, they were instead reduced. To reflect the global practice mm. that's one but also to reflect the impact of energy on the average gambian yeah. yeah okay so what the action they have embarked on over the last 
48 hours. What did they say linked to it? Uh, what are they telling you to do now? What, what, are, what are their demands? What are, they, what are their demands? They, 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 they mainly concern about three parameters of the price structure. Which and is, these parameters which are, are the trader's premium, yes. the importer margin per cycle, and the LC cost. So tell us now, what is meant by traders? Um, um, I mean, uh, traders premium. premium. That, that is, that's that's the bigger, the big importer, so the ones who bring fuel here or whatever. You know, let me let me explain briefly how it works. Yeah. The trader premium, okay, oil is a product that you do not deal directly with the refineries. No. You yes. have to pass through what we call a trader. Yes. The refineries, they refine that oil, mm. give it to a trader. Uh -huh. To sell it on their behalf or on behalf of whosoever owned that particular product. Okay. So as a result, that trader, mm. his involvement in the value chain mm. attracts some cost and a, some sort of income for him exactly. for the services that he is rendering. Not as those, they are middlemen. Exactly, they are middlemen. Mm. So it came to the realization that uh, when we made an assessment in the sub region, mm. we realized that the trader's premium in the Gambia was somewhat generous mm. and also the price structure was also skewed towards traders mm. so as a result there was a government engagement to see how best to also mitigate the full path through effect of the russian ukraine war you know the exchange rate difficulties in the pricing so this was what led to a marginal reduction of the traders premium from 100 dollars per metric ton to 80 dollars per metric ton for PMS, Ego, and then. Yeah. Uh, so why why are they concerned that you have reduced that? Because <laughs> uh, why why are they supporting, the, so to speak, the, tra the traders, the traders? Uh, this kind. Uh, maybe there are several other factors. Mm. We know, you know, if government mm. is having to do away with 1.2 billion dollars mm -hmm. in six months, mm -hmm. that is too hard for a decision to take as a state. Mm. Having to have uh, the capacity to be at the service of 2.4 billion uh, 4 million people mm. losing 1.2 billion, billion is not a fair stake mm. yeah. take yourself for instance i have a family maybe six people yeah. i cannot even afford to lose one thousand dollars on my salary my because <laughs> that if that happens i cannot provide my basic essential to my to my family yeah. and so does government so that is one of the reasons why we are saying mm -hmm. that framework of pricing need to shift towards allowing re uh, revenue mm -hmm. to be generated, even if not at full optimal, mm -hmm. but at a marginal that will allow government to provide services in health, provide services in education, provide services in security, and so forth and so forth. So, so the, the other thing they talk about is letter, uh, withdrawal of letter of credit. Yeah. That has been restored. Yeah. That has been restored. Historically, this used to be an average of two and two point five percent. Okay. Uh, they had a meeting again. Let me tell you that uh, pricing of petroleum products is no more at the Ministry of Finance. Mm. It has been taken as per the Petroleum Act. Yeah. Petroleum. It is at the Ministry of Petroleum. Petroleum okay. But again, they do not do it independently. Independent. They do it with a multi-stakeholder committee, yeah. where the Ministry of Trade. Mm -hmm. The Ministry of Finance, Pura, mm -hmm. Standard, Gaipa, and the, the standard Commission. Bureau, not the the standard Standard Bureau, not Standard Newspaper. Yeah, Standard Bureau, okay. I mean. Okay. Yeah. So it's these are all sitting members, mm -hmm. and they deliberate on the basis of the data that has been provided, based on an internationally uh, acceptable practice, where this uh, uh, data is generated from, which is called PLATS, yes, because plats. it's one of the most standard a platform where you can get energy prices to the dot and real time. Yeah. So the third one you said they're, they're talking about is what then? The, the, with the, the third one, one is the their dealer's margin. Yes. You, uh, for the time that I was at the Ministry of Finance, this dealer's margin used to be between $2 mm -hmm. to $3. Mm -hmm. Recently, this dealer's margin has been increased up to 5.88 bottles per liter. It was only this month yes. per liter. Yes. That means for every liter that you sell, mm -hmm. an OMC is getting five dollars eighty-eight bottles. Mm -hmm. In context, if you are selling, let's say, two million liters mm -hmm. as an OMC, mm -hmm. let's take GMPC for instance as an example. Yeah. They sell two million liters; mm -hmm. they are getting close to twelve million dollars is margin. Yeah. And <laughs> you know that is such a big amount mm -hmm. for people 
to make a first out of like one dollar difference here. Okay. okay. Because I cannot imagine like in one month hmm. your overhead cost can you know be out of the limit because hmm. of a one dollar difference deduction. Yeah. And besides, some of these OMCs they own the, the transport system that they are deploying to uplift from the depot yeah. at Mandinari to their pump stations. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that is telling you that uh, for that 5.88 mm -hmm. is wholesomely owned by the OMC. So that's because it is meant to do mm -hmm. transport mm -hmm. and plus their overhead costs at so the even pumps. You think by your calculation or the ministry's calculation, that's more than enough to cover whatever whatever overheads they are crying about. Absolutely. Uh, by our estimation, I think that's a fair level of margin mm -hmm. operating within the sub-regional benchmark. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and now coming to the the, the shortage that has been uh, yeah. experienced between yesterday and today, yeah. uh, we have come to the realization that it is not actually a shortage. Mm -hmm. It is a refusal to it's uplift exactly. from the depot and sell to, 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 to consumers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To the extent that uh, this morning I woke up to uh, a Facebook, you know, a statement of one of the pro one one of the the prominent uh, politicians, ah, okay. I would say, Opposition. saying that mm -hmm. you know, it's true this is happening, but it is artificial, it is man-made, mm -hmm. it is not a systemic mm -hmm. shortage that has happened as a result of a systemic failure. Yeah. It's a refusal to uplift from the depot, mm -hmm. supply your uh, uh, your stations, and then sell to people. So, but what are they not themselves breaching any 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 agreement or any law in doing that? Uh, you know, we are operating a free market. You cannot uh, compel anybody to s do what is it over and beyond what his individual objective. So, in other words, you have no choice but to negotiate with them. Yeah, as we speak, we are on a negotiating table with the major OMCs, and I am hopeful that there will be something positive coming out of it from now against uh, one o'clock. I mean, I defer yeah, with can him first. Uh, yeah. I can you help on. us? Uh, no, allow me first. I defer with that last statement whereby he said, it's a free market. Mm -hmm. But petroleum is not only a strategic product, but it hinders on national security. Mm -hmm. When the depot was in Banjul, owned by Shell, mm -hmm. and that's why Atlas, then Elton, Shell refused <laughs> to accept and give them throughput because they said, it's their depot, they don't want their business. Mm -hmm. Government intervened and said, look, whether you like it or not, you have to give them a storage agreement mm -hmm. because it's national security, it's your personal depot, but the, as far as government is concerned, it's a strategic infrastructure. The depot was a strategic infrastructure. Likewise, mm -hmm. what we are seeing today in the Gambia is called a contrived scarcity. There's two things, a stock out, meaning there is no fuel in the country at the depot in Mandinari. What we're seeing is a deliberate contrived scarcity whereby product is not being lifted, lifted. to the station. station. Now, on the issue of what government can do, honestly, I think it's just Barrow's government. If this were Yaya Jamin's <laughs> government, the measures would have been different but coercive. But what would you, are mean? you are comparing dictatorship. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about dictatorship. Sometimes and, and, and the environmental context differ yeah. in a very drastic way. But so we cannot is, act the same way. My point is there's what you call a force measure, a national force measure. We could have gone to the depot. We know all of these um, <laughs> importers, what they own. We can lift product from the depot, dump it in their tanks sell and deposit monies in their account. It's called nationalization. But who shall allow it? Yeah, but, who, who but, shall but, no, no, but not, that's not, a drastic measure. Who yeah, shall? but it, I think it is too drastic who for the prevailing yeah, but economic sometimes. fundamentals. One, who secondly, it's too drastic for the kind of governance structures we are trying to uh, I, I know, practice. But yeah. And also, it's too drastic for the kind of environment that we that are we in. Are in you have just seen what happened in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. You have just seen what happened in Sri Lanka. Yeah. We do not want to fall victim of things that we can learn better from, from. and then still put our country at jeopardy of Chan, what security I, problems. What I've noticed right now. So that's right why now. we must approach this in a very strategically, uh, you know, mild way, mm -hmm. have it resolved as we are doing right now. Yeah. Because as I speak to you, people are at Ministry of Mit Petroleum yeah, trying to meet and get this resolved in a very amicable way. I, and I think, to be fair, that is the best way of approaching this without causing further friction in the market that is so fragile and like he said 
is one of the most fundamental security product. Mm -hmm. So you must make sure that whatsoever approach you take, yeah. it is an approach that does not get us into further fiasco. But I also yeah. hope that this is the last time they'll do such a thing. And the reason why I would have taken a harder and a tougher line, I'm a critic of the government, but this time I am with government wholeheartedly on, on this matter. Absolutely. In as but much as I'm with them, because I understand the dynamics and the fundamentals. So you mean you 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 believe the OMCs are unnecessarily? Uh, no, no, I'm not blaming. I'm not blaming. We first have a fundamental problem. The fundamental problem is the price structure as is today has a lot of discretion. Mm. And it's because of this discretion, someone is seeing something, not objectively, but seeing it from their perspective. Mm. And that's why we need to change the price structure, whereby when even people sit mm. to de de determine prices, there will be parameters that are going to guide what they're going to <coughs> talk about, rather than you know, having to have an input in it. But that's one thing. My worry and fear is, mm -hmm. if the OMCs are used to this tactic, mm -hmm. government will be at its knees and at their mercy for the longest of time. Um, because it's a bully and a bluff. Mm -hmm. They have bullied the government, mm -hmm. and the government couldn't call the bluff. Why? Mm -hmm. Because we have a population to protect. Mm -hmm. So now the government is meeting with them. And it's a meeting that's not on equal footing. Mm. One party... The OMCs. The OMCs are in a stronger footing because they have put a social pressure on the government. On the government. Mm. And that's why, as a government, sometimes you have to nip it off the board and stop you, it. You have to. And, that's and I, I, I think, I'm not cutting you. Um, you have to be. I, I think, uh, with all fairness to the state and the government, mm. uh, we have started seeing the direction to which this whole thing is approaching. Yes. And do, do you think there's a political... No. Uh, I, 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 I wouldn't, I wouldn't economic call economic because I do not know. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't presume. Yeah. But then to what I know personally and to what we know at the Ministry of Finance is that mm. this is the second time it is happening mm. in less than three months. Yeah. Mm. And we know that there is a need to change the kind of framework we are applying mm. in terms of pricing of petroleum products in the Gambia. Mm. Uh, but I think one fundamental thing that also led to this chaotic situation mm. is the scarcity of forex which has been re uh, resolved. Forex because Forex exchange. Forex exchange. That you know, could have been the excuse reason. me because we, you know, yeah, you as are, economists you are, we like to cut you, you stuff are, you are and then go you, you are a little bit more we economical on the world. We are the only initiated, so, so we said so, foreign so, exchange. So what has happened is the central bank has uh, made a reversal on the forest uh, policy uh, policy so, decision. So that, 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 and and that, that is going that decision by the central bank actually contributed. I mean the uh, ban I, on I FCDs. wouldn't I wouldn't say it contributed to uh, this particular incident, but yeah. it contributed to some to sort of shortage of a claim by OMCs that they cannot access forex. Foreign, yeah. But now that that policy reversal has been put in place, yes. we are assuming that there will be an inflow of forex that was presumably not coming yeah. as a result of the policy, maybe. Ah. I'm not too sure. Okay. But again, on top of that, now you know, OMCs can also have a latitude to approach their banks, banks. that they can access forex, forex for imports of basic essentials and fuel is one of those basic essentials Good. that's one but there'll now be a last effect though yeah the certainly. directive has been um, has been reversed reverse yeah but naturally there'll be a lag effect because the market will not realign overnight yeah oh, certainly okay. you know so monetary policy has always a lag yeah, effect so even in advanced countries okay. yes. so it will take some time it will take it. some time yeah. uh, and i believe now if this happens to yield some dividend mm. the side of forex would, would be, be addressed be solved, yeah. that's one but also from the part of government mm. over the months and over the years mm -hmm. because we realized that omcs were finding it difficult mm -hmm. to get forex when they need it mm -hmm. and because of the time differential between the pricing mm -hmm. and their need for import for subsequent consumption mm -hmm. the dollar rate would change I see. we included in the price structure what we call a forex adjuster, adjuster. Mm -hmm. so that these people do not take a huge loss nice. at the time of buying forex to import Import. for a subsequent nice. so these are things that yeah. government have done so we must right. approach this thing in good faith yeah. and knowing that people at the minister of finance and government stakeholders mm -hmm. are doing everything possible to making so that there is nothing like this in the future ah, so it's interesting that yeah. Yang who should be 
Nyang who is a critic of the government is is in, in this matter he is with the government. He's even no, calling because, objectivity. No, because, no, He's even calling for drastic no, measures. Because, because you know uh, you know I will tell you one thing. Mm -hmm. When it comes to oil pricing, it yeah. is a global standard practice. Yeah. So we cannot deviate. Yeah, yeah. I've been in this for a decade. Mm. He was in it for a decade. So we see the thing the same way. Same way. In as much as we might have different opinion mm -hmm. and different perspective, but, but when it comes to economic facts, yeah. they are indeniable. Yeah, indeniable. Now, yeah. Omar, if, if, if petrol sellers are asking for price increase or whatever they're asking for more margin <laughs> well, where does that live <laughs> transport <laughs> operators <laughs> transport operators <laughs> i know two, two economists are discussing <laughs> so we are been following their conversation okay with a bit concern as far as the, our operations are concerned mm -hmm. because yesterday i'm just following the minister of finance mm -hmm. according to the minister of finance you have two things as of now yeah to increase the bond price or government to take more revenue more and more subsidies okay so which is which so I, in my, I've seen it in my family, I say, increase the pump price, this is no-go area, as of now. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because people are crying, mm -hmm. everybody's crying, you want to put another, you know, you know, in, you know numbers there, that's going to, you know, it's going to affect a lot. Okay. But one most important aspect is, for me, this discussion was been existing a long time. Okay. I'm not, I'm not part of the company, I know about their discussion mm -hmm. on this issue during the MLCs and the ministry. Yes. So I, I think government also cannot sit up to the last minute mm -hmm. and try to dec dec discuss it again. Because already the damage has been done already. Mm. How did it affect this, your sector over the last year? It's affected everybody. Because our sector today, yeah. you, some of them sleep at the petrol stations. Yes. Some of them have, you know, middleman within, buy it from 1,005 cents to 1,007. Some, mm -hmm. some of them cross the border. And buy fuel. So if those people bring their fuel, they're going to sell it higher price. So end of the end users yeah. are going to suffer. That's the reality. For me today, if I'm from here, I cannot come back. That's the reality. So you, only, 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 only a few weeks ago, you, 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 you presented a proposal for fair increases uh, to the government. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Would what, what you cap capitalize on this chaos now to push that forward? I hope you're not going to do that. During the discussion, uh, I present the, my proposal to the government, including yeah. the Minister of Finance, they have been part of the committee. Mm -hmm. We discuss until we agree on something. Mm -hmm. In that time, even pump price was 75, 73. Mm -hmm. Before that that, 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 that approval was made by you know, 73. Yeah. After that, more they increased around 100 some bottles. Mm -hmm. But still, we are discussing with them at, according to the, the Ministry of Transport. So now they are waiting for the Minister's approval. But the legal team sit and disagree on something already. Oh. That is including the commuters, the consumer protection, the government police force, Minister of Trade, Minister of Finance, and Minister of Transport and the Government Transport Union. So we present something, we decide within the, within the line. Our process are a little bit mad, but finally we understand what the student government are facing. But we also are doing business. And we expect something. But for me, my, my perspective is the Minister of Finance carries off this matter before the date. Because I remember on the 4th of August, mm -hmm. the OMC had a press conference. Mm -hmm. they, have, they have been saying this. Yes, they said. Over one month. Yeah. So still nothing came out of until they have been doing you start negotiating. Ah, okay. <laughs> so for me, my, 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 my assumption is government is going to take more subsidies. So government... No, but government cannot. They left the matter. <laughs> no, but but you but cannot they, give what you don't have. But, but, but didn't they have, have a point? I mean, the oil marketing companies made noise since early August. They even threatened. No, but that was resort. That's yes. why I said in my yeah, intervention that yeah, yeah, you had a, meeting with a them, similar yes. problem has happened mm -hmm. twice in a space of three months. Three three months. months. And that is not news to anybody. Yeah. I have lived it, he has lived it, yeah. young, yeah, I did and you did. Yeah. And you know, to be quite honest, mm. uh, we are in a state of a very complex product mm -hmm. that has social dimension, national security dimension, but also a business dimension. Mm -hmm. As I speak to you right now, the pump price that you are buying for diesel mm -hmm. is not the actual pump price for diesel. Right now, that flumara I was talking about is negative for diesel. So it's suppressed. Yeah, it's suppressed. The actual price of diesel, part of price structure, is seventy-five eighty-eight. The price for diesel right now, now is seventy-one dollars in some bottles. So government is losing about four dollars. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you one thing: mm -hmm. diesel is one of the most highly consumed product petroleum product in this country yes, yes we are right. doing about right. 12 to 13 million liters if you multiply 4 by 11 million or 12 million that's 48 million that government is losing for only one product in one month yes 
if you extrapolate that for 10 months that is 480 million yeah. that is more than the budget for let's the say ministry. 10 ministries combined <laughs> combined so you know we must also appreciate the fact that government in trying to stabilize the market mm -hmm. we are losing so much it comes with a cost and government was willingly taking this cost to the extent of 1.2 billion yeah but mr jalo so the, the, the capita cost yeah. or losses mm -hmm. on oil related revenue mm -hmm. is fundamentally high but what what when they say they too are foregoing um, you know profit margins where do they do they? where do they where do they forego you didn't you didn't you didn't consider that point we that do that point. we do that's why mm -hmm. we had a consideration not to touch their margin by more than one dollar mm -hmm. that was 5.88 mm -hmm. this month it is 4.88 and you that 4.88 you are getting mm -hmm. we are losing 4.88 for diesel yeah. right mm -hmm. so while you we are allowing you to gain some sort mm -hmm. we are losing fundamentally from but Mr. Chan, what the price should have been <laughs> and it's not yeah but the gain and lose that's yeah. all happening right now uh -huh. is because of the inefficiency and the asymmetries in the market absolutely the market as it is right now like i said mm -hmm. i'm very sympathetic to the cause of the government mm -hmm. because government need revenues to run its affairs mm -hmm. our affairs mm -hmm. but equally we need to put everything in context how did we get here mm -hmm. The Mohammed Bazi regime created a price structure that was good for a sole importer. So all the money was coming to one person. Now, these people are tasting what one person was eating alone. Now they have the opportunity to have it. But then the price structure then was inefficient. And that's what we inherited 2016 to date. And not much has changed. So the importers are used to monies that they didn't earn. Mm -hmm. I'll be very tough to say this. Mm -hmm. The importers are used to monies that they didn't earn. Meaning, mm -hmm. when you're in business, you have a cost. Mm -hmm. And your cost must have a return. But the return must commensurate with your cost. Exactly. But as it is right now, the returns they were getting is not commensurating with their cost up until they start having these forex issues mm -hmm. that started shrinking their margins. So what we need to do as a country led by the Ministry of Petroleum with the help of the Ministry of Finance because the Ministry of Finance is the fiscal authority. Mm -hmm. We should come up with a price structure that is more efficient and less discretion. What do I mean by that? <coughs> a price structure, because right now they're using Northwest Europe average over 30 days, mean and high. I'm, I have no problems with all of that. It's good. LC costs, we all know the prevailing commercial rates for LC cost closing and opening, you add them together, 2.5 to 1.5, depending on how big you are in and, the market. And that's what is in the price structure. It's already there. Yeah. So now, what these people are calling for, I am very fair with government in this issue, because what is happening, if it, if it doesn't happen, I will be the same who complains about crime, yeah. who complains about roads not being maintained properly, health, systems, health system, education, etc. Yeah. So in as much as i am a critic mm -hmm. i have to be a constructive critic and what i'm saying right now mm -hmm. where i am faulting the government mm -hmm. is for government from 2016 to date not having an efficient pricing model the pricing model we have right now is highly inefficient and that's why someone can sit down and say they are cheating me i'm not getting enough but, but if everything is based on a matrix mm -hmm. There is no discretion. So even the committee will not meet. They will just plug in figures at the end of the month. I, and I, once I, they plug in figures, they say this is what it is and no one will complain. I, I think, uh, yeah. just let me address a few of the things that you have raised. Uh, the price structure, yeah, is true. It needs to be improved. Mm -hmm. But again, I do not consider that it is inefficient because you know why? Uh, a lot of the pricing issues that have re uh, impacted fuel products are revealed by the problems in Russia and Ukraine mm -hmm. and also the global shipment system has also you know changed drastically yes. and this has all added cost to being it the fuel product being it basic commodity like food so uh, and to that effect we have uh, advised that the, the pricing committee work with OMC's to make so that the pricing structure 
addresses the needs of both parties. Mm -hmm. That is government on the one side and OMCs on the other side. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the reasons why, as we speak to you, a joint uh, you know, meeting is being held to make sure that the best parameters are But far why as now? Why not two concerned. weeks ago? Why not three weeks ago? You see, we cannot be firefighting. No, it has been happening. <laughs> no, no, no. It I'm not saying that. The meeting today mm -hmm. should not have been today. No, this similar meeting happened on the 4th of August. I, I agree. But yeah. what I'm on saying the 4th is. Of August, what I'm a saying similar here meeting is happened. Exactly. What and I'm this saying. meeting was attended by both OMCs and government. In fact, in fact, uh, on the 4th I, of I, August. I think I have an update on that meeting. Yeah. Uh, it was said that during that meeting, the OMCs expressed their dissatisfaction with government for not consulting them over the changes on the August 22nd, August, uh, and the August fuel price structure. They also appeal with uh, government that such chances are normal and can be, uh, effect, can be affected gradually, not as abrupt as it is. They advised that such could cause a shortage or resistance by the traders. The Minister of Finance then gave a brief rundown of the economics of the petroleum downstream sector and how it has over the last six months affected government's budgeted revenues. He stated that uh, government estimated revenue of three billion from the petroleum downstream sector. Instead, the government uh, had to subsidize up to 1.5 billion to stuff, soften the fuel price hikes and shock on the general public. So as to stabilize the economy, the government could not continue these subsidies on the petroleum products and the development partners of the Gambia also advise against a continued subsidy as such. Even in the absence of a development partner advising such, mm. it makes economic sense to mm. make uh, arbitrage between security yeah. and also cost that okay. is involved. Okay. And that's what we are faced with. Because today, mm -hmm. if government is not able to render the basic essential services, mm -hmm. I cannot leave this room and then think that I can get to the highway in peace. Mm -hmm. I can't. Yeah, but Mr. Jalo, because the basic essential okay, let's, let's move on. Education, and that security, health, Mr. Jan, before yeah. we has move to be on. assured so, by government. I, I yeah. just have one of your welcome. Sometimes, sometimes allow me, allow me. Okay. Let me just come. <laughs> Let me finish this. Sometimes, government also is selfish. Mm. November, October, November, December. And January, we all saw what was happening, but government re refused to touch the price because it was a political season. Wow. Yes, fact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you follow the market, yeah. the prices should have changed in October, mm -hmm. in November, in December. But the incumbent didn't want anybody. He didn't say it, and he doesn't have to say it, but he has handlers. It was left like that, and the bleeding was bad for government. We were bleeding and we bleed, we bled profusely, mm -hmm. but nobody cared about costs mm -hmm. because they cared about something else. The elections. No, so but, my point but, is, but, that's why we need a pricing model mm -hmm. that will not yield to discretion, mm -hmm. but it's a model that you just plug in data at the end of a period, mm -hmm. whatever the price is, everybody takes it as it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. That way and, the country and, and is better. And I think, uh, let me just say mm -hmm. one of two words on what he said. Mm -hmm. You know, as an economist, we all know there's what we call political economy. Yeah. But also there's what we call social economy. So you must make an assessment of the gains and the costs associated to any economic decision that you make. At the time, that was deemed to the to be the best of policy to be adopted, and that's why government adopted it. From October L to December, losing, losing money. But why are you losing money in the now? Then? Let's continue to lose money. Ah, no, <laughs> we cannot continue I, I want to lose money because <laughs> now the ramifications might be much higher than any social uh, issue or consideration that is on the table or, or the past. Okay, All right. Let's Fair let's enough. deal with some of the uh, uh, discussions at that meeting you're talking about. And uh, let's, let's see whether all the, mis uh, all the all the worries that were raised by the OMCs have been addressed. Now, you said the discussion also touched on other arrangements that would inspire confidence and uh, reference sources of information and data used on the fuel pricing structure, such as the following: foreign exchange rates, letter of credit cost, the reference plats prices, and the trade trader premium we talk about. They said going forward, government will ensure that foreign exchange rates used will be custom regulate some or, or uh, custom revaluation rate published by the central custom bank. Custom valuation rate. Valuation. Yes, valuations. Yes, valuations. Similarly, the meeting agreed that the central bank announces letters of credit rates of banks or averages because this will be this uh, this will be the source of the LC rate charged going forward. 
the plots prices reference will continue as usual for example 25 of the previous month to the 25th 25th of the previous month to the 24th of the current month etc and finally the trader premium government will engage the major traders that selling that is selling fuel to the gambian importers to set a uniform for the gambia preferably for the whole year the government can oh. also arrange a meeting with these traders at their offices in Switzerland to set premium purposely for the Gambia. <laughs> the oil marketing companies also pleaded with government to consider restoring the dealer margin to the previous rate. This will help importers to provide discounts to the smaller businesses to keep them in business. The dealer margin, they stated, will cost, uh, will also cushion, will serve as a cushion for their. So, yeah. all these were arrested at that meeting. How much of it have been implemented? Uh, let me start from the bottom. That is the extreme way. That mm. has been partially addressed. Okay. Now there is a policy reversal on the monitorium on forex okay. exports and also yeah, banking. Central, central bank that bank. has been done. So mm. that means uh, with a time lag, mm. we are expecting that this, uh, this policy reversal would yield some dividend and ease up the pressure on the market. That's one. Mm. The second thing is that in terms of forex pricing, you know, the central bank is mandated to give an indicative custom valuation and that is globally yeah. it's a global best practice yeah. and that's we are adopting mm. so but again going back to what i said mm. in terms of the exchange rate adjuster mm. during his time there was nothing like exchange rate adjuster yeah. in the price structure absolutely mm. because i came to the minister of finance that price structure never had an exchange rate adjuster to cushion omc to their losses of forex mm. but this government has given them that latitude and, and arbitrage to make sure that they are not losing excessively on forex. Mm. That's one on the forex side. On the dealer's margin again, I said at his time the dealer's margin was under two point five dollars per liter. One dollar fifty cents. Yeah. Now it's, now it's up to five dollars eighty eight. That is six almost nearly six dollars per liter. So that is also addressed. Now coming to the importer margin and then the uh, the traders, traders premium. And the importer margin, we all know you are not importing every day and every month mm. because the size of the economy would not warrant you to import every day. And the volume of consumption and the volume of the depot is not, that's why it's called an importer margin per cycle of import. Yeah. Mm. And I think that is fair enough to also allow them to have, you know, a revenue generated by their import operations. And that level is still at about $70 per metric ton. And regionally is and competitive. Exactly. Exactly. We are all in this uh, you know, space. We are all you know, actors in the space. We know what are the regional benchmarks. Yes. So going now to the last point, which is the, the yes. trader's premium. Yeah. This, is, this used to be $120, up to $100. Mm. What government has touched is just $20 for PMS and the other one we did not touch much because it's still at hundred dollars per metric ton. Yeah, the ego. It's ego, ego, yeah that is diesel yeah. because you know uh, we do not want to cause a friction in the market especially for diesel that's why we are still taking a loss per unit of liter that is purchased by but consumers. But government said they can no longer continue to uh, you know give these subsidies it basically means that uh, they don't have it what you, you don't know, have you what, cannot give. You know it's like uh, you know you are bleeding. Yeah, thank you. There is a limit to how much you can bleed. Oh, Beyond bleed. that limit, you die. You bleed to death. <laughs> and if <laughs> government dies, we all die. <laughs> so, so, so what will they? So, what we are saying is that we are not saying that we will not subsidize. Mm. That is a known starter for sub Saharan Africa. No. Mm. But we are saying this level of subsidy mm. must be managed at yes. optimal level. And that's what we are trying to do. Cha. And I think that is, in terms of policy consideration, that is a fair judgment of the economic fundamentals and the fundamentals of the market. Cha. How much? Be before you come, let me have one question. Yeah. I think the two of them can help me about it. Mm. Uh, my, my brother from Minister of Finance, mm. he's yeah. saying, you know, we all know what is happening between Russia and Ukraine. And at the same time, the, the, the pump price is very different with the, what is the, you know, you know, you know, real price. Yes. But I'm going to ask one question here. I'm a layman. Mm -hmm. uh, we all know what's happening at the world now, but we all know the, pre the past two to three years, mm -hmm. COVID period, mm -hmm. the, world, the world market, mm -hmm. the, f the storage problem, because we all know the price goes down mm -hmm. up to the very, you know, little, small amount. Okay. But still the Gambia government maintained the price. 
So we didn't invest. The government made a lot of millions. Mm -hmm. I think government can, you know, use that money. Windfall. So Windfall. They have the Gambians. That's what the OMCs have, have, have been talking Recently, about. Recently, Senegalese government is doing that. That's why still they are sending their, their diesel they are the 57 dollars per liter. We can say average of the government view truck us now buying fuel from Senegal. That's a lot of revenue. Hmm. No, that's not good yeah, for but the if that money wasn't saved, it cannot be given now, and that's why mm -hmm. I'm saying that there are inefficiencies. One Mr. thing, Mr. Jallo, listen, he's saying that there was a period when the world market has gone down, but the government refused to bring the pump down. No, the government did not refuse to bring so, the pump but price why down. Did you put it let today? me let me put in context. Mm. In as much as at that particular time, international oil prices were down. Yes, but the cost of shipment, logistics, logistics was mm. up because the health safety measures that were to be applied mm. and that were institutionalized by operators mm. were so expensive that it ah. adds up to the cost. Ah. If, for instance, the cost of this laptop goes down to $50, mm. but the other associated transactional because cost of the laptop, laptop goes up over and above mm. the decline in the cost of the laptop, the net effect is zero. zero. And that's what we realized. People mm. were presumably saying that the international oil prices are down, so government can take it down. Yes. In fact, during that same period, mm. we had Gambia being charged a premium for shipment. Yes. Mm. Because parcel size were because small. Because exactly, parcel size were small. Yeah. The second thing is that empty containers were hard to come by. Yeah. Because they were all stuck in China, China in so Europe. Because those out. were major operators. Mm. And you know, you cannot an empty container that was costing let's say two thousand dollars was costing six thousand dollars yes. uh, and let me tell you there's something that government is doing still mm. to also help the society mm. that people do not know mm. when the COVID came we apply a 20 percent discount on the imports of basic essentials mm -hmm. that is rice sugar oil everything that has to do with basic essentials mm -hmm. that if you import a basic essential that is costing hundred dollars mm -hmm. The tax assessment is done on eighty dollars. Mm. But that wasn't a good move. It was a good move no, because you know why? We it, it wasn't because if you look at um, rice, for instance, for the longest, even in Jame days, there was a concession on it. But is that being passed on to the end user buying mm -hmm. rice? No. no. So you know, there are certain you know, but, things that but, happen but for us in as transactions. Government, yeah. As me. government, uh -huh. what we can do yeah. is to provide that policy. Now, yeah, but if it's not operators. effective, yeah. no, but, but that's why you know every policy comes with some you attendant know, issues. issues. Yeah. I know. And for us, at our side on policy, our consideration was that if we do apply that, mm -hmm. there would be a, a pass, pass on effect yes. yeah. to the consumers. Exactly. So we cannot be a public policing system Just where we go and start doing price control. Price control. Yeah, but but, but that if is you out of it. if you give someone, but a that's where the problem is because if you cannot enforce that. Then I didn't know. No, we, we and no, I didn't know. But, but we, we enforce will and it, is, it is now the responsibility force. of the public yeah. to make sure that if you go to the store and buy something, you tell them, you know, government no. has no. done this. I, no, I, don't have the, I don't have the bargaining power know. to deal with a rice importer. They will not even know. It's take it or leave it. They will not even know. But yeah, what but needs to happen is when Because someone, what happens is that all your efforts will go in vain if it doesn't get to the end result you want. You no, decide. because I think the fundamental problem was mm. a lot of people do not know this is they still don't happening. Know. No, but we know. No, but, but, no, but, no, but even but if you communicate. And it's still, it's still been in practice. The mm. GRA is yeah. still applying that yes, twenty percent discount on basic. I quite so agree, and, but yeah. people are and that is that one of the most socially driven policy yeah. that government has adopted yes, yeah. since it's, the COVID. But it's not yielding. The, the intent is because, good, yeah. But the operational aspect of the intent lacks clauses. So to unless police. you begin, you have yeah, a measure yeah, to you implement know, it uh, to, know, to, to enforce uh, it, we will have a problem. You know, we have a systemic issue in the economy. I know. And mm -hmm. it is not something that you can solve overnight. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the reasons why government is looking at other ways mm -hmm. to making sure that when this kind of policy come into play, mm -hmm. it does yield the dividend that it is intended to yield. Okay. And those things are in the pipeline coming. Mm -hmm. At one point, People will get to see what the government is doing if through its satellite agencies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, I do not want to preempt that direction yeah. of government policy. So wait, can you, can but it is help, something that can is you help being. Me, uh, gentlemen, if the OMCs continue, can, can how long do you think can they themselves, you know, in in in, in, in very frank terms, continue to to sell? I'll, I'll throw it back to you. How long can you stay out of food? 
<laughs> so you mean in in a ma- in just a matter of time they themselves now they're feeling the pinch exactly. right now as how I speak long to you. Lamin, can you feel out I, of food? No, no. I've, I've just taken. Look, they have a financial was... obligation exactly. to their suppliers. Exactly. So the fuel sleeping on Mandinari and not working. So, so if the government, uh, I mean, if, if government can perhaps withstand or make the that public... will be irresponsible no, for no, government no, no, no. too. <laughs> Wait, no, make no. them make the public no. to understand and wear a little bit. No, no, Lamin, that's irresponsible. Lamin, Lamin, I do not want this to that go to the good. public with yeah. the notion that government is going to also hold back in. No. no, no, no. This is a partnership. I yeah. see. Government and OMC, we are not holding baggage on any yeah. body. We are holding baggage for national interest, okay. and it is in the interest of both government and OMCs to have this thing resolved. So and from what I got to, uh, you know, gather from the meeting that I just left to come here, yes. is that there is high spirit from the OMCs to have this thing resolved before the end of the day. The day yes. And I'm sure that they have that good spirit. Mm-hmm. The government also has that good spirit mm-hmm. because this is a national security product. Mm-hmm. And you cannot downplay the ramification of having this thing continue for over 72 hours. Lame. Okay, and so it is not in the general interest of both OMCs, yeah. neither is it in the general interest of OMCs. Yeah, As okay. you speak, he's sitting here, yeah. he's telling you what is happening. Nobody wants to go through that pain. Yeah. If I am not going out, my daughter or my son will be going out. Yeah. Yeah. If those are not going out, my aunt, you know, those kind of things. We must put it at, you know, that level of understanding mm-hmm. and that level of need to having both parties have this thing resolved as soon as possible. Yeah. That yeah. is OMC but, but and government. Now, going forward how, how what do we do to avoid this no that's what i'm saying now what i we are trying to do is that this committee that has been set mm-hmm. that encompasses both actors in the industry mm-hmm. are devising a way and i can tell you one thing from the meeting that is currently ongoing mm-hmm. there will be a resolution that would avert such happenings in the medium term mm-hmm. i cannot tell you for certitude that Problems will not happen in the industry. That is not true, mm. and it, it is everywhere. This is common. Okay, yeah. Even in Nigeria, where they're producing or fuel, or you have this kind of problems. Sierra Leone, the same thing. Yeah, yeah. But I can tell you for a fact, there will be a resolution and a solution that is meaningful mm. to both government and OMCs in the next couple of hours. But Mr. Chang, wonderful. Mr. Chang, just, yeah, just to wrap up. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you yeah. know, there's a famous economist called Wilfred Pareto. Mm. He has what he called the Pareto optimality, whereby he's stating that we can make everybody better off without making anyone worse off. Exactly. Mm. But for that state to happen, mm. it has to be a give and, and take. take. Yeah. And that's why I said I am a critic of the government. Mm. But in this case, I empathize mm. with government. But in as much as I empathize with them, I equally want them mm. to walk on the pricing model why and where and what needs to be done there is too much discretion mm. on the plat side it's good mm. on the dealer side we're giving them something generous but it's not something that we're giving based on quantifiable data to say this is your cost mm. per liter to pump it out and to bring it from the depot mm. so we haven't done that we've just given them a balloon money but what we have given them just in global terms is generous but what we need to do now is to do a study to know the precise cost mm-hmm. of lifting product from Mandinari to X point in Basse or X point at Kairaba Avenue. So we know that come what may, mm-hmm. this is the true cost mm-hmm. of the product coming here. Mm-hmm. So that the government will now justify, look, your true cost is less than $2. Mm-hmm. I'm giving you $4.88. Mm-hmm. You can cover everything and make a margin from the salaries and everything you're paying. You're paying. But right now, since we don't have any value associated with the lump sum we're giving them. Mm. They can just cry foul. And but you know, it's <coughs> okay. what, one thing Good that point. I yeah. forgot to mention, maybe, yeah, finally. is just to come back to one point. Mm. Government is a stakeholder in this industry. Mm. And on top of the revenue cut that we are taking on the fuel price structure, mm. we have also reduced the depot throughput from $35 per metric ton to $30 per metric ton. Yes. And government is a major stakeholder of gum petroleum. So that revenue loss is accrued to government, not to OMCs. Through okay. dividends. Yeah, through dividends. So we must, if we take a holistic estimation of the cost and revenue costs that government have taken, wow. it's over and above the 1.2 billion that we have said. Yeah. Wow. So we must be fair enough to, s- to know that 
is a complex industry that requires you know periodic update of expertise mm -hmm. periodic update of you know technical know-how mm -hmm. and this we have embarked on through the committee and be rest assured in the next coming days government is going to mount you know an aggressive soul searching mm -hmm. as to how best we can resolve these problems and you know deter them from yeah but happening. also i think government on your part is sad but it's only in gambia that government don't respect outside um, expertise what do i mean by that <laughs> the government thinks to know everything <laughs> and tends to work in vacuum i'm not talking about bringing international consultants or things like that no we don't but need that we have internal capacity uh, yeah but no, no, no but what i'm saying yeah. and it's it's not only peculiar to petroleum but across the board the government of the gambia doesn't respect its indigenous capacity unfortunately it's not a prejudice that i'm trying to put out there but what we have in country to resolve a lot of things the government doesn't respect i i, I, I would I'm defer not, on I'm that one I, anyway. I, 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 I always know politics will come I'm, 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 I'm a little bit scared i i absolutely I'm, defer I'm on that I'm point scared okay finally yeah i'm a little bit scared right, yeah. about the the the, the future yeah. of the situation mm. because about minister's statement yesterday night Minister of Minister of Finance. Okay, what did he say? At yesterday night. What did he say? Only two things stands as of now: mm. to increase the pump price or government to continue to add more subsidies. Is that no. what he said? Yes. Okay. And the GRTS. Mm -hmm. So in one thing, and the OMC saw their position already. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Government cannot continue to take more subsidies. Mm -hmm. to, to increase the pump price, this is no go area. Mm -hmm. now, my brother was saying these are. You know multiple stakeholders mm -hmm. but i feel some stakeholders are, are, are not part of the discussion such as for me maybe it's not, not we are not relevant much but mr trust are not part of the petrol company so stakeholder committee they will no. be part of it i don't know yeah, but every situation we have been calling them they say we are not aware mm. so for example if today government agree with the omc i don't know what's going to happen mm. they agree to increase the transport fare the pump price. pump price exactly what is the next people don't know the government told very clear they cannot continue to take more subsidies. Yes. So this is the <coughs> future for me a little bit scared. Anyway, I want to respond to that uh, in I a very where brief will, way. Where will we end then? Because okay, no, just briefly. Finally, yes. I want to assure what? you that whatsoever the case is, whatsoever the position of both government and OMCs are, mm. we are going to reach a resolution on this problem okay. that is equitable, mm -hmm. optimal and fair to both parties. In and consideration of the plight of the society Absolutely. yeah thank, thank you, so you much. very much al haji jalo from the ministry of finance and yang jai our experts in the room for your insights and valuable contributions and of course omar sise president of the gambia uh, transport union key stakeholders too and you and i you know are all stakeholders we hope that the current negotiations at the film house just down the road succeed and we will have fuel uh, available in abundance as it used to be so that we go back to normal. Yesterday night I, I was at the petrol station GNPC until midnight plus. Hmm. Midnight plus. I wish I have a lot of money like uh, Omar and others. <laughs> I, would have, I would have bought <laughs> a lot of fuel. Okay, we will of course have a short break and we'll go back to sports because the Gambia Football Federation took elections took place Last week, we'll pick up the bits and pieces from that election when we come back with the vice president, the first vice president of the newly elected executive. So join us in a couple of minutes. We'll be back. In a day and age where technology is creating a world without borders, filled with unlimited potential to improve the lives of the people around us. Innovarex Global Health ushers in a new way of leveling the playing field with increased access to quality healthcare services delivered at your doorstep. 
Our qualified professionals are equipped with state-of-the-art point-of-care testing technology to conduct tests such as kidney function, liver function, electrolyte tests, body composition, hemoglobin, A1C, and many more services with the highest efficiency in delivering results. The addition to our flagship, Wellness on Wheels, more fondly known as WOW Delivery Service, brings the entire clinical experience full circle. IGH has remained committed to creating the future of healthcare delivery. Gone are the days of sending loved ones outside the country for basic medical services. Innovarex Global Health offers a new peace of mind and takes pride in delivering the quality of care we all deserve. Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic Microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic Microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832-151 or visit Yona Head Office at Thipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you. Welcome back to the brunch on Kefatu Live after dealing with uh, petroleum matters, which of course is the biggest issue in the country today. We go back to sports now, the national elections of Gambia Football Federation took place on Saturday. A new executive, led by incumbent uh, then Lamin Kababajo, was elected with uh, very much uh, the past, his past executive intact and in fact has an additional uh, president, that's the fourth vice, fourth vice president in uh, Senabu Cham, who is the president of the Women Football Association, uh, one of the allied associations uh, of the Federation. Bakari, Jame, re-elected first vice president, is with me in the studios. We go through um, some of the things that happened at the Congress and, of course, the feature of football under the new executive of Lamin Kababajo. Uh, Mr. Baj, uh, Mr. Jame, welcome and congratulations on your re-election. Thank you, Lamin. Uh, it's a pleasure having uh, uh, me again. Uh, you, you practically dragged me into the studio <laughs> for Can the records. Me, um, were you at any time scared? that the team restore confidence of Kamaso will sweep the polls and remove you out of office? Certainly not, uh, Lavin. Uh, yes, uh, uh, like we have said yeah, here the last time we are with uh, Fatu, uh, by the nature of uh, the football politics, at the end of the day, it is the uh, owners of clubs and uh, uh, executives of uh, the allied and regional football associations um, that will make uh, a choice and uh, uh, over the last four years that we were reviewing it was the group that uh, are an integral part of the football uh, federation uh, our successes uh, as an executive uh, is their successes our failures are their failures mm -hmm. and um, yes uh, elections is a season but the engagement of the primary stakeholders have been ongoing so we know exactly the thinking of the actual people that matter on the day um, and then at no time did we have any doubt that uh, we will be returned back to office. I can assure you that. 51 votes uh, against 25. You almost doubled Mr. Kamaso's uh, numbers. 
is it a true reflection of the massive acceptance um, of the Kaba uh, camp? Or do you think the dominance? Or is it that Mr. Kamaso didn't make electoral gains? Or according to him, his, his accusation was that you people have too much illegitimate control over the electorates. That is what led to that. <laughs> Actually, I am privy to something that you don't know. Okay. I was the counting agent, and yes, then there was. Yes. Uh, yeah, you were supporting. Yeah, uh, you were the agent for Kam Kamaso. Always, yes. Uh, I am in charge of the logistics. Yes. Uh, uh, at, at the electoral process, yes. uh, the invalid vote yeah, was, uh, was cast in our favor. favor Unfortunately, um, uh, that particular club—it's a club. Enter two uh, No, oh. uh, did write um, his name mm -hmm. and his club's name oh. and signed it. So we so would have got 50, 52, yeah, he which, which felt a little bit short. Uh, of, of what, what we expected. what we expected. Oh really? So who are actually? The, who are the, who, who who do you think are your your members who broke ranks? It's it's over it's over <laughs> now. It's, 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 it's over it's over now. <laughs> we are there to represent all the seventy seven. And reconcile uh, everybody. Uh, yes, I mean that is our um, uh, wish, and this is how we are going to pursue. Because mm -hmm. uh, even though, like uh, in our uh, uh, report mm -hmm. that we did which was a scorecard yeah. which is now over now mm -hmm. uh, you have seen that we have actually articulated a lot of successes over the last four years mm -hmm. and uh, we have also stated the areas that we had challenges or you can call it failures which we will is encompass mm -hmm. but now the focus is now our manifesto mm -hmm. and the other learnings that we had during the the, the campaign mm -hmm. uh, uh, period we won fairly and squarely there's a fundamental thing which I want uh, your yes. viewers and yourself also to understand. Go ahead. Uh, the electoral process mm -hmm. is managed by an electoral committee, mm -hmm. which is independent. Okay. And it was elected at, at Congress, and the chairman, Jaju, and his colleagues mm -hmm. actually um, ran that. Mm -hmm. uh, before the electoral process, mm -hmm. as part of our uh, manifesto, mm -hmm. we wanted to actually copy best practice which we have done now mm -hmm. uh, the trend that uh, uh, the world is going mm -hmm. and particularly in football and also the evolution of women football in the Gambia mm -hmm. we want at the strategic point of view uh, to have women in charge of leadership mm -hmm. but at the operational we have been gradually working towards a half a woman football department mm -hmm. not a unit like mm -hmm. now but like a now. department working directly under the general secretary. So mm. this is the thinking. Mm. Uh, if you look at the GFF constitution, mm. an executive committee or any member uh, can actually suggest mm -hmm. uh, for the uh, actually uh, changing of any section or addition to the constitution mm. by following a process. And we as an executive, because this is our strategic thinking, mm -hmm. Uh, to actually have women's football completely at par at main football. And we have came, come very, very far from the awareness uh, project we had with FIFA mm. called uh, uh, Leave Your Goals mm. uh, some yeah. nearly uh, eight right. years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's quite at really at the start of our first mandate that this thinking actually come in. Mm. Now, by the time we get uh, uh, to complete our mandate, we have a have a women football uh, department mm -hmm. and then sort of women football will be somehow at par with male football in this country mm -hmm. as an executive we followed all the processes mm -hmm. to ensure that we table that and that has nothing to do with the congress i have heard people saying well, yes, let, it, has, it has altered the numbers of given on no, everybody know it has no significance on the election but the timing of the uh, amendments that's your opponents you know, suspected that you actually want to induce the women federation, the women association, the three words they have, you know, by coming up with amendment, you know, as an inducement, you know, telling them that, uh, okay, we are creating a fourth vice president that's going to women. Even though it could have been anybody, because, because if the women federation president was a Kamaso supporter, he would still have been vote fourth vice president anyway. The talking about inducement mm. are opinions. Yeah, I know. Anybody is entitled to your opinion. Mm. But the facts are mm. nobody is induced. Mm. In fact, 
out of respect mm. for anybody, mm. we cannot induce an, anybody in. We are in, in 2022, for mm. heaven's sake, Lavin. Uh, you are as equally but informed. But we creating a fourth vice president on the day of the election. No, the creation. Yeah. Then it's been there. When we unveil our manifesto, mm. we have said it. Yeah. From day from so day, from, the, from day an, one, hold an AGM on a different day. Uh, look to have an a congress. Extraordinary AGM on a it, it involves a lot of logistic preparations. It involves actually cost. Mm. Of anybody mm. who really, mm. I have said this uh, uh, the other day here. If you are not an election football guy, mm. but you are a follower of football, yeah. both at member association levels like us. Yeah or at the continental level, mm. or at the world scene, here I mean CAF and FIFA, yeah. you know that this is the way you do things, mm. actually. Mm. If at all members, we put our proposal in front of members, mm -hmm. in, an, in, in line with the constitution, mm -hmm. and they have a right to vote for, mm. against, or stay neutral. Mm. And we have seen in the hall, mm. people have voted for, yeah. people were neutral, we're and abstained. people have voted, uh, abstained. Abstain and eventually, the majority, the mind of the majority, mm -hmm. uh, carried, uh, so they bought uh, the idea, mm -hmm. which is a very good idea. And then it adds uh, so much to our football, to our diversity. Mm -hmm. We have nearly 20 people in the executive mm -hmm. by the nature of our constitution. Mm -hmm. We used to have two, we want to increase that to five. And I think if we have the opportunity, if we have the support of the members, we will further increase that so that mm -hmm. at least we have some sort of uh, parity. The point now is that, mm. the f and also the facts are, this has no impact on the election. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. We started the electoral process with 77 winning, uh, uh, voting delegates, delegates mm -hmm. and those are the ones that actually voted. You've seen everybody was in the hall, mm -hmm. etc. So, well, people are entitled to their opinions, but the facts you saw are clear. Mr. Kamaso's side uh, came up with, uh, well, what they call a petition to FIFA and CAV. Um, you, you must have seen it in the media or, or etc. Um, do you hear, I mean, the team raised issues such as procedures. They said one of the reasons uh, I've, we've discussed that as AGM on the same day. The other thing is they said uh, the electoral committee had no business with their um, with matters dealing with AGM. Uh, for example, yes, we saw the electoral committee not taking part in the AGM. Why then do they have um, uh, any right to say that he was not properly accredited by young Africans? If they had no business with AGM, that was an AGM matter, they said. What I saw is, is, what, I saw mm. is uh, what is written on the Standard newspaper mm. and the Point newspaper, mm. uh, making reference to 54 pages. Yes. I don't know whether it's 54 points or 54, 54 four pages. Well, 50, no, well, pa well I, didn't, I didn't count how many pages, but it's oh. quite a long, long letter. Okay, I am not, I am not, I am not privy yeah. uh, to, to that letter. I didn't know. I don't know what is the intention yes. of, of, the, of the letter. letter. Okay. What I do know of the, of the process, because I'm a, I'm a candidate, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, this thing is not about Kababajo mm -hmm. versus. We are all candidates, and if you look at our constitution, mm -hmm. as elected officials, we have responsibility. Okay. Yes, Kababajo is the president mm -hmm. uh, and the leader of of the group however mm -hmm. i have my responsibilities de facto it, this is a board mm -hmm. i am not answerable in a certain way, certain way to 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 him i will have to discharge uh, my my duties mm -hmm. as per the as per the constitution, constitution. uh etc and, and the role okay coming back to this letter mm -hmm. i don't know what is the intention but as a candidate mm -hmm. i know the process mm -hmm. when i applied and anybody else who is a candidate from the president to uh, executive committee members mm -hmm. is that you state w your affiliation mm -hmm. and then uh, you uh, have to be involved in football uh, for an X number of years and mm -hmm. you have to be resident here yeah. and you also actually uh, uh, attest to the fact that you will follow the process. Exactly. If you are dissatisfied with the process there is an electoral and independent electoral appeals board mm -hmm. that you actually go to. So I don't know whether that has been done, etc. So I cannot comment on the facts mm -hmm. uh, of those uh, that letter that, that you letter. are that you are saying. But, anyway, but what I do know, it was not addressed to you anyway. It was you know, yes, to yes, yes. So we are not. What I do, mm -hmm. what I do know mm -hmm. that uh, this election mm -hmm. is the fairest election. I've been involved with many elections.
okay uh, uh, at the gff level mm. since in the in the 80s mm. these elections is been is, is really fair because we are in 2022 mm. we know the eyes of the world mm. is watching mm -hmm. calf uh, uh, were present. FIFA. Uh -huh. the, the, the FIFA were present mm -hmm. by the head of their Dakar office, Elijah Walker Job, mm -hmm. and also Solomon Mudeji. He made a statement mm -hmm. that they are here to observe mm -hmm. uh, the process. They are our parent bodies. Mm -hmm. They have reported back, mm -hmm. and then we have been written to mm -hmm. by CAF and FIFA mm -hmm. that uh, the process is. Uh, uh, is, is fair, it meets the standards and we are congratulating and we are moving on mm -hmm. uh, with the implementation of the manifesto mm -hmm. and also uh, with certain things that we have learned because mm -hmm. if you are in a campaign like this, mm -hmm. you have to listen also uh, to the to the opponent, the opponent yeah. and you have to also listen to the general public mm -hmm. because we know that the football family is equal to every Gambia did you come and out even friends of the Gambia. Did you come out with any point that Mr. Kamasu's team have made that you agree with? For example, they said the constitution is such that the incumbent has unfair advantage. They said the general secretary, uh, which by the constitution or by the general assembly is also, I mean, secretary to the electoral committee, gives the advantage, give an advantage unfair to the incumbent because he is seen to be part and parcel of on, the executive. On, on, on both, on both counts, I don't agree. Mm -hmm. from a personal uh, point of view and from a, uh, a football administrator mm -hmm. uh, uh, point of view somebody who's been doing this for for some time you yeah. will agree well, you, you agree, agree with that? that i do not i don't agree mm -hmm. uh, with the with the points yeah. i don't think the president has any advantage because he is not involved in the process mm -hmm. of course constitutions are living beings yes they can change. Yeah, they can change. Like, yeah. like how so we, we want to enrich. In the we can, we can fair play. play. Don't you uh, think that look, can Look, I, 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 I think mm. uh, this is everybody's business. Uh, yeah. Along the way, we are going to, like we did before in the first time, to have a mid-term review. Yeah. We are going to go and have uh, a football summit very soon. We've mm. been trying to, for FIFA and, and UEFA to help us to have a football summit so that we can have people, mm -hmm. not only for them to uh, actually contribute to it mm -hmm. but enlighten because certain things that you you had mm -hmm. or say mm -hmm. really uh, with all respect to people are entitled to their to their opinions mm -hmm. but they are not true and but maybe they didn't also understand how football is, is actually run or, or managed i mean the vilification of of officials anybody yes. who is an official is just a uh, franken style yeah. who is Very here to look for yeah. for money uh, for it's not true yeah. you forget that these players mm -hmm. i i own a club mm -hmm. i have taken young people uh, uh who have talent and then you mold your talent to be skills mm -hmm. and help them along the way to turn professional to come and uh, actually represent their countries and the vast majority of those mm -hmm. uh people uh, representing the country of our part of business are very help, uh, thankful and they were relieved. I have had numerous calls from our, all our categories of national teams thanking us and being relieved. This is, this, is, this, is, this is the fact because they cannot be involved in the politics. So I think we, this summit will help and along the way the learnings from those summit uh, we will improve because we are the next four years set up for a legacy to ensure that we have a good legacy because I'm not going to stand for elections anymore. You, you cannot. That can go for record. You cannot. It's there. You cannot. I cannot. Yes. yes. So I'm, I'm, I cannot because yeah, you I cannot. don't have. You, you passed. I don't have. I have passed. You passed. Pass I passed. I passed that, and that is why over the next four years we wanted to have a proper success on planning. Oh, success on planning. Yes. Are you, certainly. You may not. If you look at the you, members of our. Does uh, that mean are you grooming some success? Of course. Certainly. You grooming success uh, uh, from the football family. Okay. Uh, to people to understand how to organize football and how to develop football. Mm. There are specific skills mm. that you require for that. Mm. There are certain processes and procedures you have to follow. Wow. You don't have to pick anybody out. I, I was challenging one of your colleagues, our brought and said, I would like to have a debate from you mm. when you hear about uh, fresh people yeah. completely outside of the system. To me, it's a recipe for, 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 for disaster. Mm. Because uh, you see, even with the best intention, the FIFA forward regulation, which is the main funder, mm. uh, some of the challenges that we have. Mm. And then it's evolving again into 3.0, which need people uh, to have an understanding of how to, to manage actually football. You, you just you, don't yeah. jump out from uh, to be that. But coming back to your point yeah. uh, regarding 
uh, the extraordinary congress mm. it is done according to 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 the law so uh, the two points that you made to me are not are not valid valid point yes certainly mm. in any election process there are winners mm -hmm. and there are losers and then sometimes uh, the losers at the tick of things mm -hmm. can say or do uh, certain things uh, but with time we hope mm -hmm. this beautiful game will bring all of us back together mm -hmm. uh, uh, because a lot has to be done today uh, on the 20 yeah. is playing yeah all uh, all uh, already they've, they've already we need qualify to the next no we need to win today to win today yes. today to be actually certain we, we are preparing for the under they 20 to, they won twice four four nil four one the last time and two and, and two nil, and two nil ahead of the group but we have to play guinea and we have yeah. to play senegal, senegal and two two teams will get out of the group for the semi-finals and the finalists will almost, qualify almost certainly gambia yes yes so, i mean like uh, we need to have a good good result and uh, we are very much focused uh, of, on, okay. on that let's 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 talk about it you, know, you see for real or imagine people often said a lot of money comes to the gff millions and millions of dollars so for real or for imagine people think that um, i mean this, this this whole lot of money you know goes to the pockets of the executive either through contracts or through allocating traveling allowances for themselves over four 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 years or so so the layman the perception is that oh, what, where is that old money gone to? Oh yes, so so how that, do you oh, deal you with know, that? You know, you know, I mean, let's, how do you deal with let's, that? Let's call, let's call a spade a spade. Mm. If you look at the people against this federation, yeah. it's a coalition of two. Okay, the old opposition ah, okay. and some of us. You can see in the uh, uh, the majority of the executive state and their return, and yep. some of the some of the executive, and then uh, you can see there is a direct attempt mm -hmm. uh, to link this GFF with this word uh, corruption which is certainly not true mm -hmm. because you have seen uh, uh, people being challenged mm -hmm. bring out the facts mm -hmm. where are the where are the facts yes if you receive money mm -hmm. how much is it the facts are mm -hmm. we receive a million dollars for operational support mm -hmm. per year and for fixed four million uh, sorry, two million for uh, development support for projects, which I attempt to explain the last time we mean is the yeah. projects doesn't mean infrastructure project, mm -hmm. which is six million, and also we receive support for travel, mm -hmm. right? Uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and also another uh, similar one for uh, equipment. Equipment. Yeah. Football is a very expensive yeah. business. Yeah. Today, our U20 is in Mauritania. Yeah. It's nearly a ten million dollars cost. The wow. travel, the ex, uh, 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 all the expenses. If you absorb, yeah. there's another fifteen million for the U23 because of the nature of the qualifi Perfect. qualification. Perfect. And uh, we have support from the government of Gambia on only one category, which is the one. senior national, the which national, is the most expensive, yeah. or not or the woman. Mm -hmm. And then we are. In, on a journey to ensure that all the national teams play so mm. even the money that we receive for operation mm. is ha it's not enough yeah for, for uh, i mean amount of expense i mean uh what is for the documents to show mm -hmm. we are on the board we are volunteers i'm not a hustler yeah. <laughs> in <laughs> i'm not there yeah. to make money i have my other businesses uh, and my work to do including even farming to ensure that mm -hmm. we leave and also we are we are gambians we are the first i have said in one program mm -hmm. i am in football because i'm a gambian mm -hmm. i'm in football because i'm a fan mm -hmm. of of, of football, football. Yeah. i'm in football because i own football club if yeah. football doesn't develop in here mm -hmm. my club or clubs will not will not will not develop mm -hmm. not like somebody who's just a just a fan so you cannot be more royal than than the king i'm not suggesting i'm <laughs> oh, in the yes. king myself you are royal not so. <laughs> no i'm not sure so now that we have put all this behind now looking forward in the next four years your last time people expect you to deliver on where they felt there were shortcomings for example infrastructure you had to come out as an executive to apologize that there were delays your opponents called them failures in the infrastructure development governance and the the concretization which is your your really which was the key in your campaign of the gains made the nations cup we have qualified there we want to stay there and we want to go to the world cup four years ago we set ourselves some very modest we said 
we qualify for AFCON mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> 2021 <laughs> yeah. or 20, the next one. Yeah. We did it at the first one. Mm -hmm. But this time around, mm -hmm. consciously, mm -hmm. we set the bar so high, mm -hmm. both in terms of the challenge, uh, uh, infrastructure, mm -hmm. plan, mm -hmm. uh, or program, like uh, somebody would like to say, mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and also success for s national teams. Mm -hmm. It's all in our manifesto. We set the bar high. Yeah. So that is why the responsibility is actually higher. Mm -hmm. More so that's why we need everybody's mm -hmm. hands on deck, mm -hmm. the press, mm -hmm. the members of the public, yeah. to build confidence. So we will actually try to engage people and build confidence like why actually I'm, I'm, I'm here. Many things that have been said, mm -hmm. Are hurting, but they are not. They are not true. Yeah, but that is what pro public service is about. Process, that, so. that is what that is what leadership is about. Mm -hmm. you, you throw everything uh, uh, at you, and you have. We are taking it on the chin, and mm -hmm. we will engage with people more. Mm -hmm. So, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. We know it's not our core mandate. We got into it. We will stick on it. Mm -hmm. for, for example, yesterday, mm -hmm. I don't know whether you've gone or you've followed. Mm -hmm. Supernavetan belatedly return yeah. now we turn return to Sierra East, East yeah. in a much better state mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. right the Seracunda, I'm not I didn't even well, the, I, did, I was not even invited they even forgot <laughs> <laughs> maybe they're angry with us yeah, they're still <laughs> angry. They're I don't still know angry maybe yes. I wasn't I was their president called to say they sent an invitation I haven't oh. seen it oh. none of the also the GFF were there because we were not even uh, uh, I mean, but, the, I mean, but that is not the point. The point is we want football, football to return mm -hmm. better. If you look at Serakunda is now, yeah. we have increased the security. Mm -hmm. uh, the field uh, have improved a bit. It's yeah. not the best field. The, the, the dressing rooms and eventually we will want to actually continue on all this park mm -hmm. with the spectator experience so that they have a more conducive environment mm -hmm. hopefully in the next four years. Mm -hmm. We want to qualify mm -hmm. on, on for to, to the Af African Cup of Nations again. Yeah. We want to have a shot to go to the World Cup. We have stated it. Mm -hmm. We want to have more qualified people mm -hmm. and we will ha want to have uh, uh, really more Gambian strong mm -hmm. professional. Mm -hmm. If you look at our lives now under 20, mm -hmm. a lot of boys went and they were playing. Yeah. A couple came from my, my, my club and they Kajali, for example, is in South yeah. Africa, uh, etc. And mm -hmm. I hope this also will. Pour. So it's a lot of work as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you see the theme, uh, our, our group called Team Kaba, mm -hmm. uh, there are very new. There are new additions of yes. really very capable young mm -hmm. men and, and women. And uh, uh, we've also, like I said, the learnings that came out from from this very bruising yeah. uh, but interesting campaign. Yeah. Uh, we will reach out to uh, certain people, certain commentators, yeah. uh, to actually bring in ideas or physically take part in the various committees. Mm -hmm. Because as we speak now, all the committees of the GFF and stand dissolved, dissolved except dissolved. the judicial committees. Ah, except the, yeah. except the judicial committees. Mm -hmm. And uh, this time round, mm -hmm. the formation of those committees will be more consultative. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, 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 this is something that we have actually set out for, for, for ourselves. So um, we're going to really uh, look forward to more exciting things in the next uh, uh, four years so that when, when we leave, mm -hmm. uh, we can point back to even more successes. Mm -hmm. And certainly there will be some shortcomings, but uh, that's the nature of there's no perfect system. Finally, you, you've been a, your, 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 your president has been elected uh, president of WAFO. Um, We've had Wafu Secretariat, Zone A Secretariat in Banjul for the last 11 or so years. Did we? We had. Very little of it has been felt by the Gambian people. I blame the uh, G Gambia uh, Football Federation under your leadership, being the host federation, for not taking much interest in, 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 in that area. Now that you have assumed the presidency of the uh, zone, um, and of course at the time we have lost, virtually we have lost the Secretariat to Senegal or Cape Verde, I'm not sure. What uh, if there are exist any plans for you to bring back the secretariat here to be here as you assume the presidency? I don't want your viewers to see view me as somebody who disagrees with. Uh, well, uh, well, if uh, you uh, say the GFF I disagree, did not I, I, show interest, yes. Well, okay, your uh, opinion. Uh, I, you are the host. Uh, yes, we, are, we. I am not. But I have seen very little involvement in GFF. Ex 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 in, in, in that exactly. Not with. Not. I think. I think the president has adequately addressed that. Not mm -hmm. without trying, mm -hmm. uh, because the secretariat uh, was uh, manned by 
and a Gambian, yes, a, 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 a Gambian, Gambian and Gambian. perhaps maybe you need to put to him mm -hmm. uh, also uh, a senior brother of all of us yeah. uh, we have a lot of respect for you might put to, put to him but going forward mm -hmm. uh, even even on Friday I had a conversation with the president of Wafu who happens to be our president as well mm -hmm. that we must try that uh, in the shortest possible time, mm -hmm. we have the Wafu Secretariat actually here because it's going to be his legacy yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, not talking about uh, the uh, national benefits mm -hmm. uh, from uh, the pride point of view that we have uh, uh, actually a sub-regional organization operating out of our country, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but also the ancillary staffs and some of the ideas that we have uh, for Wafu, then yeah. it can be more practical because they are here on day to day basis. Yes. We can't. Yeah. So he's, he's leaving uh, for the tournament and uh, he'll be meeting with his colleagues. And uh, I can assure you, the first objective is to bring the secretariat here. And not only to bring it here, but to make it actually full work. Fledged work. Yeah, uh, full, full fledged work. Full fledged uh, uh, secretariat. Mm -hmm. So that uh, what uh, Wafu wants for the development of football in our sub region, not only organizing. Uh, competitions mm -hmm. uh, but also some of the things that have been copied mm -hmm. by a member association like our cap uh, capacity building program I mean I can tell you mm -hmm. we may Allah leave us here mm -hmm. in the in the long term mm -hmm. we will see the impact of these soft things mm -hmm. that ensures that the organization of football is actually done 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 better like our under 20 now mm -hmm. I mean touch wood two yeah. out of two out of two yeah. we beat Liberia 4-1 yeah with our coach yeah. that has been educated from from here yeah, he's not an expatriate i mean yeah. you have been reading things I'm in like the newspaper mm -hmm. some people are saying other other things but now for one or oh, outplayed but but have, his have, fellow. i mean haven't we haven't we been champions twice in this in this tournament so it's, it's, it's expected that we should be able to be among those who qualify for yes the, for i mean if, if you look at it we have been champions because it's a reflection of our league because right. none of those boys mm -hmm. Uh, actually playing mm -hmm. outside the country. country the whole contingents are local are local based players mm -hmm. but coming back to wafu mm -hmm. certainly mm -hmm. taking the presidency of of wafu mm -hmm. i know president bajo one of the things is to ensure that actually wafu works for gambia wafu works for all the nine countries, uh, uh, countries in west, west africa uh, so i think uh, there will be a uh, real movement uh, and exciting times ahead for for wafu okay finally um, well, how would you see your job cut out for the next four years? I would like to, on behalf of my colleagues, mm -hmm. uh, use uh, this medium and every medium that we are on mm -hmm. uh, to thank uh, um, the, the voters, everybody, mm -hmm. number one to 77, mm -hmm. anybody who's vote or not uh, or for or against us. Mm. Ah, uh, oh, even those against you. Yes, uh, yes, certainly. It's okay. uh, it's it's, it's, it's a democracy family, yes. is democracy. contrary. It's okay. a football. It was a football family. Okay. I mean, we are uh, actually used to these fights on the pitch. Then yeah. after we will we will make up uh, okay. Okay. Uh, and and actually move on mm. uh, for for returning us uh, as a group okay. uh, back to back to office. I would like to thank. The members of uh, the, the the journalism family um, uh, certainly if we have biggest critics we have seen that <laughs> it's coming okay. from your ends but that's 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 that's, okay. that's good it All keeps right. on our on our toes i would like to thank the general populace mm -hmm. as well uh, and certainly the uh, the organizers of the election which is the electoral uh, uh, committee for doing what was what was right it's not that we also didn't have our frustrations or or some of our concerns and we have dealt those ones uh, where it should be we decided to follow 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 due due process um and in the next four years the intention is actually very clear uh the accelerated development of all aspects of football because in the country because still there is a significant gap between football in the gambia and even some other countries in the sub-region mm -hmm. the gff alone cannot do it mm -hmm. we were going to do it with of course certainly mm -hmm. we operate under a government with with, with government mm -hmm. uh, you can see in our manifesto mm -hmm. one of the things we wanted to do is to ensure that uh, we 
uh, have a good working relationship with the government of the Gambia, Gambia. and we have a good partner uh, uh, in that uh, uh, first uh, our online minister, Honorable Bakari Baji, who is mm -hmm. a great supporter of uh, football and sports in general, yeah. and our chief uh, patron, which is oh, His Excellency the President Adam Obaro, mm. uh, as, as well. Uh, they are Has all he very congratulated supported. you yet? Uh, <laughs> well, maybe uh, he didn't I'm, know about your election. Uh, I, he was out of the country, <laughs> I understand, but I believe he did. <laughs> he <laughs> always did. He's a football, he's a football fan, okay. and, and everybody else, all the leaders in, in, in this country, uh, uh, from religious, uh, cultural, mm -hmm. uh, political. I know everybody prayed for the best for the Gambia, and what Allah has done is what is the best uh, uh, for the Gambia. Good. Yeah, for, for the critics as well. Well, I can't thank uh, them anymore. It's, it's, really, it's, re it's really good. Sometimes it's gone beyond board, yeah. and oh, I think yes. we have to learn from, yeah. Yeah. Uh, from that as, as a country to, be, to exercise more decorum yeah, sure. uh, because we are people of uh, faith, we are people of, of, of tradition, and we should try to respect each, each other. Mm. But uh, football will be even much better in your country, Lamin. I can assure you that. Good. Bakari Jabme, first vice president of the newly elected executive of the Gambia Football Federation. Thank you very much for coming on the brunch and we wish you a um, successful uh, term in the office as you, you wrap up um, your last term. You. Right, the brunch will be back hopefully next week. And until then, Lavin Chan wishing you have a great weekend and I hope you have fail wherever you are and I hope that the fail crisis resolved through that meeting happening just at the corner here at the Petroleum House. I Good hope you too. Inshallah. <laughs> All right. Thank you for now. In a day and age where technology is creating a world without borders, filled with unlimited potential to improve the lives of the people around us. Innovarex Global Health ushers in a new way of leveling the playing field with increased access to quality healthcare services delivered at your doorstep. Our qualified professionals are equipped with state-of-the-art point-of-care testing technology to conduct tests such as kidney function, liver function, electrolyte tests, body composition, hemoglobin, A1C, and many more services with the highest efficiency in delivering results. The addition to our flagship Wellness on Wheels, more fondly known as WOW Delivery Service, brings the entire clinical experience full circle. IGH has remained committed to creating the future of healthcare delivery. Gone are the days of sending loved ones outside the country for basic medical services. Innovarex Global Health offers a new peace of mind and takes pride in delivering the quality of care we all deserve. Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic Microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic Microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships 
to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832-151 or visit Yona Head Office at Thipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you.